Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be comparing the Mustard Dwarf Cavendish with the Mustard Bastion. Let's get straight into it. So, we'll start with the obvious difference in these two types of uh, banana plant, or banana tree. Um, it's a size difference, of course. The Mustard Dwarf Cavendish is, of course, a much shorter, smaller variety of banana whereas the Musabash Jew will grow a lot taller. And in terms of coloration, one striking difference is that the Mustard Dwarf Cavendish has much darker leaves on, on the top and on the underside. They've got a bit of a glaucous look to them, a bit of a white powdery coating that does rub off. Whereas the Bash Jew is more, I would describe it as a lime green on top and bottom. It's a very yellowy green in colour. The Dwarf Cavendish does, on young leaves, have a dark, dark blotches. You can see them on this leaf that's appearing there. A little bit like Musa sicamensis. It has, well, I suppose, purpley brown marks, but of course, after a while, it does lose that, that coloration and it sends out plain looking leaves. Another big difference is, of, is the colour of the pseudo stem. You can see there it's sort of pinky red. Whereas with the mustard bash dew, if you can peel back some of this dead foliage, it is a lime green colour all the way down. Interestingly, both of these varieties of banana can be bought in high street stores. Uh, for example, I picked up this one in B&Q. Um, it was labelled as a, a Musa banana. And I have seen the Bastu also available in places like B&M Bargain, B Bargains, um, also labelled Musa without specifying what type of Musa. So it's worth looking out for these on the high street. Um, they can be picked up quite cheaply and the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I've brought this mustard bastu outside it lives for most of the year on my bathroom window which is west facing a nice sunny window and as you can see it's sort of outgrown its pot uh, the dwarf cavendish will grow as big as the pot allows and uh, one thing I've noticed this year is it hasn't set up any pups uh, the one that's remaining from last year hasn't done anything, it's still tiny. Last year though, when it was a smaller plant in the same pot, I had about four, three or four pups uh, to cut off and propagate. And this tells me that it's ready for an upgrade. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to plant this in the ground for summer. A Musa Dwarf Cavendish is a house plant. It will be sold as a house plant. It is 100% not a garden plant. However, I think in the middle of summer, June, July, August, you can safely put this outside and it won't ad adversely affect it. Um, if you look up online the minim minimum temperatures for a mustard dwarf cavendish, you'll find a lot of websites, a lot of sources tell you 10 degrees Celsius. I think you could probably go a little, a couple of degrees lower than that. And it has done for me in the past. Um, so my choice is give it a bigger pot, keep it on the windowsill, or plant it out. And I am going to plant it out. And um, I've got a good spot for it. Um, and we'll see what it does over summer. When a lot of non-gardeners... Uh, find out that I grow banana plants. A lot of the first questions are usually to do with can they produce fruit? Um, they can both produce fruit. However, the Musabashu is primarily grown um, as a decorative piece. It can fruit and I have seen it fruit quite often in the UK, um, but they are not edible. They are tiny and green and they won't be edible. However, in contrast, the Musa Dwarf Cavendish can produce edible fruit but it takes a long time and of course as soon as one stem flowers it dies 
so you need a backup of other stems to continue to produce the fruit um, but I don't grow it for the fruit I grow it for the foliage and I think it looks pretty cool in an exotic garden